Good morning everyone. This is Jenny Pahulas Ventolero. Today I will be discussing the philosophical thoughts of education. But first I will just focus on John Locke and Herbert Spencer. So let's have John Locke first. John Locke was an English philosopher and political theorist of 17th century. John Locke's works lie at the foundation of modern philosophical empiricism. John Locke, born on August 29, 1632 in Wrington, Somerset, England, went to Westminster School and then Christ Church, University of Oxford. At Oxford, he studied medicine. He became a highly influential philosopher, writing about political philosophy, epistemology, and education. Locke's writing helped found modern Western philosophy. He is often regarded as the founder of a school of thoughts known as British Empiricist. John Locke is considered being Empiricist educator. So when we speak of Empiricism, it is a knowledge of the world is based on one's experience. On the other hand, it is a philosophical belief that states your knowledge of the world is based on your observation and perception. Knowledge is not possible without experience. He believed that child was born as tabula rasa or blank slate. So if what you have known and who you are right now, that is an accumulation of all things you have experienced in your life. That is accumulation of the dealing you have with the people around you or with your society. John Locke was known in his theory that a child was born an as tabula rasa or blank slate. So tabula rasa or blank slate means that when the child is born, they know absolutely nothing. He also believed that child is neither good nor bad. Character is based on his experience. We know that every child is born, they are empty and the child is neither inherently good nor bad but that child character is based on his experience of the world and of his dealing with the environment so nature and nurture would positively or negatively affect child's character then John Locke said that you are born clean paper or empty paper it is important that when you were a child you have to learn something new and in a proper way of teaching so for them could acquire all these things as easy as possible so that when they grow old they are nothing but a good man that is what John Locke desired which is true because all child as we see them they are open to all things information that uh, that's why the rule of teacher is very crucial in making or breaking this child's life so next question the traditional view that knowledge came exclusively from literacy source greek or latin so at a very young age, it is very easy for kids to learn something new. That's why it is so easy to teach kids new tricks. So John Locke was not a fan of all the classics. So meaning, he did not believe that all people learn ex only exclusively from literacy source, especially literacy piece of the classics, the Greek and the Roman. And next, learners learn from authentic experience and they are agents of their learning so john locks believes that learners learn for authentic experiences and they are actively agents of their learning they make their own lives they are responsible for their learning and they live the life that they want so that was the belief of john locks next Herbert Spencer, 1820-1903, The Utilitarian Education. Herbert Spencer was an English philosopher, biologist, and sociologist. He highly contributed his expertise, knowledge, in ethics, religion, anthropology, economics, political theory, philosophy, biology, sociology, 
and psychology. His philosophical thoughts in education is utilitarian. So when we say utilitarian, it is a form of consequentialism which advocates that those actions are right which bring about the best overall. Herbert Spencer developed an evolutionary utilitarian ethics in which the principle of ethics living are based on the evolutionary changes of organic development. Spencer's concept of survival of the fittiest means that human development had gone through an evolutionary series of stages from the simple to complex and from the uniform to more specialized kind of activity. So social development had taken place according to an evolutionary process by which simple homogeneous societies had evolved to more complex societal system characterized with humanistic and classical education. So next is industrialized society requires vocational and professional education based on scientific and practical objectives rather than on the very general education goals associated with humanistic and classical education. So Herbert believed that people in an industrial society needed a utilitarian education to learn useful scientific skills and subjects. Furthermore, Herbert Spencer was an agnostic who believed that the only way to gain knowledge was through a scientific approach. He felt that re religion was a futile attempt to gain knowledge of the unknown. He wanted to replace the theological system of the Middle Ages of his philosophical system which stated that all knowledge could be placed within the fr framework of modern science. So science was the only way to gain useful knowledge. It was through this scientific knowledge that people learn to live in society. So next, curriculum should emphasize the practical utilitarian and scientific subject that help humankind master the environment. So science and other subjects that sustain human life and prosperity should have a circular priority since it aids in the performance of life activities. Spencer stressed the importance of the science in, in school. Learning should be sensory experience where a student interacts with his or her environment, a slow, gradual, and inductive process. So it was not inclined to rule learning. Schooling must be related to life and to the activities needed to earn a living. So next curriculum must be arranged according to their contribution to human survival and progress. Creating an inclusive culture for all staff and students and develop it to their full potential. Children should be encouraged to explore and discover which would allow them to acquire knowledge naturally. Education should also be a pleasant experience for all children with the least restriction possible. Root memorization and recitation were strongly imposed as students should only engage in those activities that would ultimately allow him or her to survive in society. Special emphasis was placed on the physical, biological, and social sciences while English grammar and literature were believed to be outdated. So as a conclusion, the teacher's role is very essential in shaping the child's life. So that would be all. Thank you everyone and God bless us all.